This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your own business. As artists, we understand the importance of having a portfolio where we can display all our artworks to date. Sure, we have social media these days, but it's oversaturated and the size and dimension is sometimes not optimal to present certain artworks. So a website is where you have your own space, where potential clients or other people have the opportunity to get to know you better as an artist as a whole. From the about page where you can introduce yourself and your vision to displaying your artwork in the gallery as well as social media posts. So as an example, I can always post my latest YouTube videos on my website so people can get to know me and what I do a little better. You can also set up your own online store which is super useful to have your profile and business in one organized space. If you've never built a website, don't worry because Squarespace will provide you with many templates for you to choose from with recommendations depending on your line of work and from there you can just upload your works and customize how you'd like to lay out further. It's very easy and fun to do and at the same time very beneficial. So if you're interested in giving this a go, you can head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch your website, you can go to the link in my description box where you can get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code NYANYANI. Thanks again Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be doodling simple hot air balloons. This is a subject that I've never done before because this was a suggestion, so the style turned out really different than what I'm used to, but it was very simple to paint, so I hope you guys will enjoy this one. I'm going to begin by drawing out the circles and ovals as the rough placement of the balloons. I'm also going to vary the size to just map out the positions on my page, so I have a fairly balanced composition. Once I've drawn out the rough circles and ovals, I'm going to clean out the lines to get rid of the scratchiness of my sketch. This way, the placement becomes more apparent and I like to erase the lines around the correct position, then redraw the line with a cleaner stroke with my pencil and ideally, I'd like to do this in a single stroke. Next, I like to draw a line in the middle of the circle and ovals as a guideline to the center of the shapes. And right at the bottom, I like to add a little protrusion where the hot air will be released into the balloon, if that's how the theory goes. I like to also make the top of the balloon a bit bigger, very slightly compared to the bottom, but I don't want to exaggerate the shape too much since I'm trying to depict more vintage shapes which is more circular instead of the upside down teardrop shape of the modern hot air balloons. Below the balloons I just drew out the baskets. You can make squares but I like to personally mix up the shapes with upside down trapeziums as well but of course you can customize it as you'd like. On the bottom right hand side, I felt like that area looked a bit too empty, so I ended up drawing an extra small one. Before I start painting on this, I decided to edit some of the size and shapes while I can still erase, and I also used this time to shift any of the positions and fix the spacing wherever I need to. Next, here are the colors that I'm going to be using for the painting. Firstly, I have Queen Red by Daniel Smith, Yellow Ochre by Holbein, John Brilliant by Holbein, Manganese Blue by Windsor Newton, Hansi Yellow by Daniel Smith, Thalo Turquoise by Da Vinci, and Bleed Proof White by Dr. Paige Martin. 
The first thing that I'm going to do here is to color in the balloons that I just sketched out. I personally like to use a couple of harmonious colors while the paint is still wet to blend the colors together. The first one here, I used Quin Red and Drawn Brilliant together to make a pink and I just played with the ratio between the mixtures so I can create two tones of pink where one is a bit more peachy and the other one is a bit of a stronger pink. And as I'm placing them, I try to separate where I place those colors so you can see a bit of that stronger pink as well as the peachy pink that's going to slowly blend together as it dries. The next color that I ended up adding to the palette is manganese blue and because I had a bit of pink residue left on my brush the color that I picked up turned purple instead which is what I wanted and then I paired the color with some of the pink that I have on my palette and again I just let the color blend naturally together without disturbing them too much so I can have both of the tones showing. Next, I wanted more of an orange tone, so I added Hansi Yellow to the palette and mixed it up with a bit of Quin Red, again, playing with the ratio to get different tones of the orange. When I pick the colors for the balloons, I try to always have either Quin Red or any of the warm tone to be part of the mixture. Warm tones are colors such as reds, pinks, yellows, oranges, and the likes. And the reason why I chose this is so the color of the hot air balloon won't blend too much with the color of the sky later. But if you're going to decide to paint the sky a different color, say a light blue or maybe even pinks or oranges, try to use something like a, an opposite temperature of the color so the color of the hot air balloon will still pop out against the color of the sky. So with this next one, I chose green, though this is categorized as more of a cooler color. I still had the Hansa Yellow mixed with the Manganese Blue as something warm, so the color isn't too similar to the sky, but this is as far as I would take the tone in terms of similarity with the color of the sky. Ideally for this, I like to be working with harmonious colors, but I also tried this using opposite colors, which is quite dangerous because it can turn muddy very quickly. However, if you are careful and you let it dry well, it actually looks quite nice. For this one, I tried to mix purple from using Quin Red and Manganese Blue together paired with a yellow orange from a mix of yellow and Quin Red. And I also played with a higher ratio of blue to get different tones. As you can see, some parts of the colors were turning brown, so I tried to not disturb it too much. But when it dried, I actually ended up liking the color mixture. For the last one, I used the same mix of Quin Red and Jean Brilliant, but because my brush was a bit cleaner than the first one now, the color also became a bit more vibrant. Okay, so next I want to start adding the details to the balloons. Ideally, you do want the base color to be completely dry so you can get crisp lines, but you guys know, sometimes I'm just a bit too lazy to wait and my hair dryer was elsewhere, so I just went ahead to paint it, but if you're going to follow my impatience, do it at your own risk. I made a purple using a mix of phthalo turquoise with Quin Red for this. Obviously, you can use any color and paint whatever pattern you'd like. I'm just going to stick with simple lines though, painted in different ways, but you can go crazy if you're feeling creative. Another option is to leave the flat colors as it is and draw on details with ink pen which I'm going to do after this so I don't want to paint something that's a bit too detailed for now. For the colors I use similar tones if not the same as the base colors but just in a thicker consistency so the details are a bit darker compared to the base color. The only pointer to look out for here is how I've painted the lines. Even if they're simple straight lines, I always try to follow the contour of the shapes to enhance the round form of the hot air balloon. If you just draw straight lines, you're going to end up flattening it, but this way, because I follow the curvature, it's going to exaggerate the form through the distortion of the lines.
done with the details now and while I wait for the lines to completely dry, which won't take too long, I'm just going to color in the baskets by using a mix of Quin Red, Jean Brilliant and Yellow Ochre to make a brown for the baskets. Okay, so now we're free to doodle and I'm just going to use an ink pen and my white jelly roll pen to add further details to the ropes attaching the basket to the balloon. I tend to use white pen for the darker base colors and brown against lighter colors just so the colors pop out. I use sepia colored ink pen for this but you can also use black. I just really like brown ink because it doesn't look too harsh as black ink but of course just use whatever is available to you. In terms of the doodles, you can do anything you'd like. You can add circles, stars, flowers, Pikachu, basically anything you want. But I just thought about the design of the ropes and how it attached to the balloons with the basket and how it will hold up and just try to play around with that. You can also search online for further inspiration. But yeah, just take your time with this. Draw as little or as much as you would like with the pen. And I'll get back to you once I'm ready to paint the sky. Okay, I'm done with the details, now I'm just going to do a wash for the sky. For the sky, I used a mixture of thalo turquoise with manganese blue. Why did I mix the two colors together? I have no idea, the blues were just there so I mixed them together. But of course, you guys know this doesn't matter too much. As I mentioned before, you can even paint using different colors for the sky, like pinks, purples, oranges to make it look more whimsical if you would like. As I'm painting the sky though, 
I also wanted to leave out some white negative space as cloud shapes. I thought that it would be fun to add cartoonish elements as an experiment, but I'm not mad about it. I thought that it looked kind of fun in the end. I'm going to mix the cartoonish clouds with the clouds that I lift with tissue as well towards the end. That's because I thought about the clouds a bit too late after I've painted the sky on the top section where you can see it's a bit too empty. But you can also make yours using only the cartoony clouds or only by using the lifting technique or a mix of both like what I'm going to do here. Here you'll see me repainting the top section and that's because the paint is almost completely dry by the time I finished painting the whole page and I needed that section to be wet in order to lift the colors. So after that I just took rolled up tissue that I've been using to dab my brush as I paint and I lift away some colors for the clouds by rolling my wrist subtly so the edges look a bit random. Of course, after this, you guys know by now, I'm going to add splatters using the Bleed Proof White because it's nice and opaque. And I'm going to follow this up by manually dotting certain sections of the painting, which might be a bit too empty for the composition. So that's it, this is the finished painting, a very quick and easy but fun one for you guys to paint along to. Like usual, all the list of tools that I used here as well as my social media links will be in the description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!